uh, did Nene do the right thing by sending his resignation to the president instead of the reports we heard earlier in the week asking to be relieved of his duties? Look, I think um, it, the decision is right and the decision is also in the interest of the country. You know, when somebody does something wrong, like what was in the case of uh, Minister Nene, you know, the honorable thing and the right thing to do also about ethical leadership is to step down and to let somebody else take over. But I think he also made it easy for President Ramaphosa to demonstrate the good governance principles that he's adopted, but also to send an example. I mean, there's many other people in the cabinet that's got a lot of skeletons in the cupboard, but I think, you know, this is the right decision for the country, specifically that is the Minister of Finance, because we need to stabilize the economy. We also may have to make sure that the medium-term budget policy statement that will be announced will be announced with the person who is a veteran in the African National Congress and in government. He's been a Minister of Labor. He served as the Governor of the Reserve Bank. And I can't think of somebody more qualified than him to take over as finance minister. Uh, Dennis, of course, the quagmire the president found himself in in terms of having to make a decision on Nene's future has pretty much been decided for him through this resignation letter. You said he made things easy for the president. Does, still this, does this then still deal with the question of the president's own credibility and commitment to a new dawn? Yeah, look, I think the president's commitment and the statement that he delivered at the job summit on, on Friday, we made it very clear that under his God, there's going to be consequences for politicians, for leaders, whether it's a local government, provincial or national government. And this is now quite clearly that this case has made it easy for him to make a decision because the person resigned. But we have also seen in other cases that the president is prepared to put his foot down. If you look at the case with Tom Moyani, when he didn't want to resign, the president decided to kick him out. So from our side, we believe it is quite important that we must focus, all South Africans, whether in the private sector or in the public sector, must focus on good governance, that we must ensure that you know, when people make mistakes or people get caught you know, in terms of corrupt activities, that those people must be dealt with so that we set an example for other people that's following in the footsteps. But Dennis, what about those people who don't have the same inclination as Nkankanene does, who don't have perhaps um, the same standards by, by way of resigning? You know, you've spoken about some of the cabinet ministers who still have issues hanging over their heads. The fact that the president has not to date taken issue um, t taken a stance in terms of getting rid of those ministers, surely that must say a lot about him. Yes, look, but, the, 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 but you must understand that he took over, you know, when the NAC of the ANC decided to remove Jacob Zuma from presidency. And he was now trying to also at the same time in his own party to preach unity, but also outside the party to deal with the economy that is very, very weak. And this situation, I concur with you, that they gave him a bit of an easy pass because Minister Nena resigned. But I think after the elections, you're really going to see fireworks. And I think he's laying the foundation through the job summit and also now through the investment summit that's coming to lay the foundation to say that the economy is important. But I think the third step is going to demonstrate you know, early in the new year to get rid of those ministers that we believe, all of us, that those people doesn't belong in cabinet and they should not be in public office anyway. Uh, but, but, but the same calls that were leveled for Nkantanene to be out of that position, Dennis, have been said uh, with ministers Gigaba, uh, with ministers Batabile Gamini, and, you know, the list goes on, but they are still in, in their positions. So as it stands, why must we understand that an ANC problem and an ANC dilemma that the president is facing must now be a national and a governmental uh, a problem for the country as a whole? Look, as I said to you earlier, Minister Nene made it very easy for President Ramaphosa to accept his resignation and, you know, to appoint... Um, uh, Tito Mubaweni as the minister and the new minister of finance. In the case of the other people, those people are part of that 
group of people with inside the ANC and the government that is fighting back. But not only just fighting back, but also fighting back to maintain their political positions. And I think the president is weak from that point of view, that he just can't go now and try to remove them. Otherwise, he would have done it, because that would have opened up a whole new can of worms inside the, 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 the ANC and the leadership. So, so what I'm thinking in my prediction is that after the elections, we're going to see a lot of ministers are going to be removed, but we are also going to see that the cabinet is going to much, be much smaller than what it is under Zuma. Uh, Dennis, very lastly, um, the a question of Nkankan, and it really sits with his dealings also at the PIC. Um, you've uh, done numerous work at the PIC. You've called for unions to get representation on the PIC board. As far as you know, how implicated could he be in the scandals that we've seen in the last two weeks? Look, our unions in the public service, like the PSA and ourselves, have made calls that we must depoliticize the PIC. We see no reason for a deputy minister to be an automatic uh, chairperson of the PIC board. And we also called, and government agreed with us, that we must appoint workers on the board of the PIC because it's their money that's been invested. And uh, we maintain our position as far as that's concerned, that we don't need the Deputy uh, Minister of Finance to be the chair, that many other qualified people in South Africa, they can chair up that particular body. And it's also very important that the case against and the allegations against Minister Nene must be investigated thoroughly by the Hawks so that he can also clean his name. But if there's still other issues, then he must be charged and there must be consequences, not only just for him, but also for his son. All right, let's leave it there for now. Dennis George giving us reaction there to, um, of course, Ntlantanene's resignation tonight. It's our breaking news story. And, of course, the new finance minister, Tito Mboweni. Uh, Annika Larson was uh, tracking that development for us. Uh,